Um, uh, my name is Manuel Villarejo, coming from Spain. Uh, I'm that thing that they call now DevOps, which is basically where people doing system administration in the past now developing an automating tool, building some tools that can help our, our daily work. Okay, uh, I got some background on you know the network system, uh, system administration, uh, different tasks, coordinating, supporting production system, high availability, and all that. At the moment, you know we are basically in charge of something like 5,000 5, servers divided on different uh, environments, all right? So production system might be around a thousand and then we have like uh, seven different environments with, uh, for development, load test and all that, all right? So a bit of background about, oops, what we wanna do is we're gonna go through a bit of background about my introduction to OpenRMS, how did I end up using OpenRMS and all that and how, and how that made me create my my own project for for for, for configuring all these open RMS, right? So a bit of introduction to Rake, which is basically a Ruby make file. I don't know if some of you know that already. So yeah. Um, then we'll see how we are using OpenMS with SVN and Puppet. That'd be like a brief introduction about how are we organizing the files, how are we trying to get the thing distributed. Um, then there'll be some basic user cases to see exactly uh, some basic example how to configure OpenRMS with uh, these uh, small uh, TXT uh, files, right? So all this is gonna, <coughs> gonna be related about the how complex I consider is OpenRMS configuration on the XML files and how that can be simplified using uh, a simple mechanism, okay? How to convert, how to create that complex configuration using simple, all right? Um, a bit of background. When I first uh, saw this, I decided this image was exactly what I was, uh, what I was feeling when I first started to use OpenRMS. So I realized that it's really, really powerful tool, but it was, it was a really, really big learning curve I have to, I have to, to do with it, all right? So I found a, a bigger system, like I say, about uh, 8,000 servers. Uh, nobody in the company knew a lot about OpenNMS, so it was like uh, a lot to do, um, not with, an, uh, with uh, enough background that they have, so it was a big challenge, all right? So to give you an example about simple situation I was facing, I, I used to receive requests as simple as monitor port 80 in OpenNMS. How could I do that, all right? So in actual, with the actual configuration of OpenRMS, you have to create your small piece on CAPST, let's say monitor 480. Then you need to create your the, the portion on, on PolarD to say how you want that to be Polar and all that, all right? But if the request is a bit more complex, which is just basically get uh, Polar for 80, 80, 80 and 443, you have to create three times that configuration um, you know, create this as well three times or almost three times all that, all right? So what I what I realized is that there has to be a better mechanism for me to create that configuration and try to avoid typos and try to, to avoid, you know, to simplify my life. So, yeah, exactly that. So the idea is that using simple entries like this, where I say that, I want to monitor HTTP port 8 and port 8080 and then HTTP 443. Using Rake, it's going to produce all this XML configuration that OpenMS is going to lay their own use. All right? So that's, that was the, the, the main idea that, that came up. Okay? That was a project that was started on the company and was developed against that. All right? And if, and if I have any time you have any questions, you just feel free to stop me, right? Um, Bit introduction, Rake is Ruby make file, so in base of some TXT file and some templates, it's able to take all that information and produce the final files that Open that OpenMS is gonna use. So with a simple command like this one, saying modifying making some modification here, running rake command, that's gonna produce exactly the configuration that OpenMS requires. Okay, and it's not gonna just modify, create the configuration for one file, it's gonna create the configuration for all the files that you define on your 
on your on your Ruby file. Okay. So how is it gonna help you with your configuration? Um, I defined two kind of uh, of possible situation, right? One is when you are running a development environment, you might have like one box to monitor development, one box to monitor integration, another one for load test, and one for production. It will vary depending on how many systems, how many servers you are actually <coughs> running on your on your on your company. So the reason why I think having different OpenMS instances is good for for your companies because every time you have to develop a new monitor or develop a new data collection, you need to restart OpenMS. That means that you you can get gaps, some data. So that's why getting this approach, I, I thought it was a, a better, a good approach for 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 this kind of situation. At the same time, if you're doing these kind of monitors um, and the or the developers and everyone get involved on the, on the monitoring side, you can get like monitors being proposed by developers in terms of saying if this queue reach this threshold, that's a kind of symptom of, uh, of an error, and that you can move, it, move across all the environments until hit production and help ITO people that support the application at the end of the day, right? So that's why having this kind of uh, scenario is, is very good for 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 approaching right, so, but maintaining full open NMS with uh, different configuration might be a bit problematic. Okay. Same way you got like different clients where you have different instances monitoring different data center and all that. It's pretty much the same approach. So you may end up with uh, configuration uh, monitors uh, applied to this client but not to that one, or you know things that you need to keep control of. All right. So, uh, how did we do that? Uh, we basically implemented a method of uh, creating, with all this TXT file being generating all the XMLs that the different instances of OpenMS that you have uh, require. They are basically being committed to subversion and distributed to all your client using Puppet. Okay. I uh, haven't had much details about how this process is happening, but uh, I guess most of you know about Puppet, I guess. If not, just feel free to tell me. So the idea is controlling the, the, the things, the, the, the files that you have to commit, and then distributing them with Puppet, allow you to, to re reuse the, your own code, re reuse the code from one place, roll back, and, and deploy things easily. So this is like... Uh, Quite a stable thing. Keep control about who has done what and all that. Okay. So, um, how have we? Uh, how how do we have this organized? It's pretty much look like this. So we have like a config folder where basically we co it contains uh, all things highlighted on on yellow are all environments, and then all this thing down here are all the templates that produce the files. Okay. So you can have from your own configuration on SVN. All the system, all the uh, all the instances of OpenMS that you need to manage, you can have them right at, right there, right? So uh, if you commit some using Puppet, you can basically get them with uh, the with all the monitor. Okay. Um, if we look at one specific environment, how it looks like, it's mainly focused on on services. So what we have here is one we have a. Um, a simple file that is called TCP monitors, where we're going to get a list of all the ports that we want to, to monitor, for example. URLs, we're going to contain a list of URLs that we want to monitor and get information from it. Okay? Same thing for JMX processes, like uh, I want to monitor the processes of uh, that system, it's straightforward. Okay? So, all that, after, the, after they have been processed, they will produce exactly what OpenMS required to get that. Okay? Questions so far? No? Alright, so with that mechanism, that's what we have. So we can share configuration, as I mentioned earlier, a uh, different version of OpenMS. So if you, as you got, as you got it on, on SVN, you can have like uh, make your branch or your tags for associated with uh, the version of OpenMS you're using. So if you have different different versions of OpenMS running on different environments or clients. You can basically control that and apply exactly that. Upgrade processes. The, the upgrade of OpenMS is a matter of uh, 
basically getting the, the change that you applied to the previous one until on the second one, right? So it avoids this, so now it's gonna go into OpenRMS and mess around with the files because as soon as you run Puppet, it's gonna go and grab everything which is lately from SVN and, and get it overwritten so they will learn the lesson if they do. Um, yeah, and you avoid doing things twice. So if you implement a really cool monitor that you go for one client, a matter of getting to the another one is like cut and paste small piece. Um, yeah. So um, some user cases. Uh, we're gonna see how to monitor JDBC query, uh, get some metrics like the for so data collection, creating graphs, uh, URL monitor, JMX, MB uh, data collection and graphs. Some cases report uh, generation. I will say like a summary of other things that this red thing can do now. Okay. Uh, simple request. Uh, we wanted to make sure that our our, JD, our Postgres database was up and running. So we wanted just to run simple queries as this. Like at least make sure that you know the the, the Postgres database is up and running and you know is uh, replying at least. So. We just need to make uh, a configuration like this that says uh, we we'll give it a name, we say the driver is going to use, username and password. We just need to expand to, to say expand this, this host name. So this is one of the nodes in OpenRMS. We don't care about uh, IDs, IPs or anything. We just, this is the, the name of the server. This is the query that needs to be run. Uh, column return, which is in the OpenRMS require that. And this is the result expected. Okay. Uh, simple as running Drake, saying this is the environment common, which is where this this file is placed. Nothing special. <coughs> it will create the CAPS D and Polar D configuration. You know, uh, as as we say that SVN is the one who control the versioning, and we can see here they are pending to be committed. Okay. So we get them committed, uh, run Puppet on the server, and you know, uh, after we scan and all that, we get the the monitor. Simple as as that okay so as i said earlier if i wanted to have the same the same monitor on other environment we just need to to take that small piece that we wrote down on jdbc queries on the environment and put it on int and that's it the monitor is uh, is great well actually run the process again of rake and commit and all that but that small piece is is done okay um what if we wanted to get data being collected um, it's pretty much a similar mechanism, so those two queries uh, provide, provide us with, uh, with a couple of numbers for the number of alerts and the number of uh, alerts uh, being in the knowledge. Uh, so we just, well actually the current and the clear, sorry. Yeah. So we just need to do a similar config saying these are the two queries that we need to, that we need to collect. Okay, these are the two queries that will provide the data, and this is the configuration you need to say. So, on the collection, we say we're gonna get a collector for JDBC, <coughs> and for the package, we say open my JDBC, expand the host to get the, to, to apply this data collection to this mechanism, and this data is pretty similar to the to the other one that we saw on the slide before. So, some information about the driver, how to connect to it, which is basic information. Okay, and then yeah, it produces all these uh, three files that contain exactly all all the all the configuration required for that to be to be active. Okay, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much. The 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 reason why this works out of the box is because it assumes a lot of uh, configuration as a standard. Okay. If, if you don't assume that and if you want to customize your your monitors and your data collection you, you will need to, you won't you can use this you know it's a it's a matter of saying if uh, when you assume the standard whatever you don't say is going to be added by default by the template and you know you can always add and customize your template with uh, more parameters here to give it to make it a bit more customized cost customizable okay so that's the basic of this now um once it's been applied you see SVM, pop the run, restart and all that, um, you end up with uh, these uh, RRDs that are being collected at the moment 
Uh, one thing to note is that the, the name <coughs> of, the, of the attributes are created dynamically, so you don't need to worry about giving it a proper name um, until later on, that you will need them for the graphs, okay? But this is a, a way of uh, basically you know, trying to make the names unique so they don't collapse with all the monitors that we have and all that, right? So <coughs> now if we wanted to make a graph, we can do something like this. So it's another file that I created that basically says uh, this is the name of the of the graph title, and you give it the two at the two the two attributes of the data being collected, some labeling, and the kind of, uh, of graph that you want to see. You give it a bit more details that are required for creating the graph, and yeah, it creates for you all this. Okay. The idea is again is all this is assuming uh, default uh, values or standard values or common values that you use for your graphs. Okay. Uh, and here is the graph. It's not the best. I mean, uh, if, if, you s if you look at the uh, at the config, it doesn't say anything about colors or anything. But you have like an array of, of colors to use. So if you want to customize yours, you can always customize the um, the the rake fi the rake file to generate to add like another parameter that say, for example, the color. I mean, and then you can use it or not up up to you to the say. Okay. Uh, another example, how to monitor a URL and a response time, and the response time of that URL. So, how to monitor this URL, that be as simple as, on the URL txt, you create this entry. That says, from my demo website, uh, using HTTP, monitor that URL. And it produces these two files, so to detect <coughs> the service and to monitor. So you got your, your monitor up and running. And then yeah, it creates for you as well the graph that is going to display the to show the, the response time of the of that URL. So you don't need to worry about anything else, just what you need and so yeah. Uh JMX data collection, uh, that was my the request I got. It like get standard Java JVM information. Okay, so for for a Tomcat over using JMS or over RMI. So again, there is an entry like this. Let's say if look for Tomcat servers on this network range and on this host specific, and it's saying the ports that JMX is going to be exposed on is going to be now thousand one, now thousand two, and the threshold true is a kind of. Is, is the is the flag that activates all the threshold in associated with uh, which is not covered here, but it's all the, all the threshold associated with the uh, JVMs, okay, like press, like uh, number of threads, uh, CX, etc. Okay, and again, it produces all the configuration needed for JMX for and data and collect D. And then, if uh, what we wanted now was to to get like uh, a custom M beam to be collected. So it's not the standard that uh, came with OpenMS. So we do something similar. So object name. This is the name of the of the beam attributes. Some labeling if you want to, and uh, something uh, like uh, that I added that I consider it was really good is that you can add like a small section here where you can define the graphs the same way as we saw before, or you can create this kind of type online, which is basically going to create a single graph with all the values being collected, as we can see down here, okay? So the idea is, if you know that you're gonna repeat this process usually, instead of trying to <coughs> build this configuration and then next time you have to do it, build then again, maybe worth going to rake file and modify, create your third plate and say, every time, you know, like create this txt file and say, every time this happens, is I'm going to create this on that, so you modify your templates to produce the configuration required. Okay, so okay, um, KC report. Uh, that's another basic request. Say we need CPU load memory for all four servers. <coughs> so in order to do that, you can just do this. It's basically define the same thing. You just need <coughs> the name of the graphs. And then and the nodes that you need to to monitor, okay. And using the REST interface, it's gonna 
conf create all this configuration that uses all the node IDs and all that. So instead of having to go to through the website and um, clicking on the on the plus button to add it to a case, or instead of having to mess with uh, this uh, XML file with uh, all this information, I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Yep. So, what are the things we have implemented? Uh, I got categories, uh, which basically organize uh, the servers on groups. So, it's able to uh, base it on queries to the database. It's able to get, for example, based on the name of the server, it add them directly to a category. So, you can reuse them later on for, for example, for threshold or things like that. Okay. Um, discovery, so you add the network range or whatever you want to monitor, like uh, external hosts, and you can use all these um, uh, in include, expand, and all that section that you saw before. So, straightforward. Uh, notification, we basically, as I say, based on, on categories and destination path, you can associate them and send notifications away with the same kind of, uh, of file. Uh, event creation, yeah, that's you know, that event generation, which sometimes is, is a bit messy because you need to create like event for recover and event for down, um, you know, all that. So creating events is, is done. Threshold, uh, I created um, a mechanism of, of getting like this space threshold, which are one of the basic, instead of having to mess a lot with uh, all the names and all the uh, all, you know the, the the resource IDs and all that in order to get the threshold applied with uh, the warning criticals and all that that basically mess me a lot. I, I rather I created a, a, mecha a mechanism that produces all that configuration. Okay. So outages, yeah, same thing. Um, NS client, WMI system processor processes like to monitor processes in in a Linux or Windows box using Nets and MMP is <coughs> done as well. Um, yeah, data collection using Xtem, that's another thing that we implemented that even converts the, um, kind of like give it a name and it converts the name into the OID. So it expects that the OID that is going to appear on the Nets and MMP is going to match exactly what, what the name of the, of the monitor is. So all that. I think that was too fast. Questions? <laughs> you have any? Have you extended it to use provision D yet? Uh, no. Okay. Not yet. We, we it have. It fairly simple though, presumably. Yeah. Take I mean, a template and away you go. Yeah. I, I mean, we're, we're using, we're scanning our networks still, sorry. <coughs> so. All the information you presented here are accessible somewhere? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. But we are in negotiation of uh, getting this release. Okay. Uh, <coughs> tell me, Marcus. So, you're running a public infrastructure. Are you also using the public packet store? Uh, yes. So that might be a very nice place to connect your provisioning against. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. We're using, we're using Foreman for that. Like, right. uh, we're using Foreman, which is... Ah, Foreman, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're still on negotiation to see if we use OCS inventory, so <laughs> we are, uh, or VMware collect connector, so, yeah. but we are still doing the scan, so, anyway. It sounds like a cliche thing, that all the, the, the valuable information is spread about three or four tools. <laughs> That's correct. Um, how many people are creating configurations uh, with that method in your group? Um, it should be around 10. Okay. Yeah, 10 people. Because yeah. we, we are organized in, in different groups. Um, it's a kind of, uh, I, there is a DevOps on, on every group. Okay. So uh, they have access to all this and they, they support all this infrastructure. So. Any more questions? Yeah, no? Uh, I wanted to, I mean, uh, I wanted to raise, add another slide saying that 
I think that getting a simple a simple request like for example the one the one I started with about monitor port 80 if you if you expand it and say it's not just monitor port 80 if you wanted to have for example an email being sent to the new CEO in the company that wanted to have a specific message and you have to do that monitor from the scratch I think you need to modify like a lot of files in OpenMS in order to get it so that was the philosophy that, that made me think about this needs to be simplified so that was like the beginning point of uh, let's take this and try to make it simple so it can be easy for, for anyone that have to use it to start with okay so that's we yes. Have, we have custom cases like that. Uh, the kind of um, <coughs> generating configuration is super powerful for um, for systems that are all the same, right? Mm -hmm. Or very similar. So how do you handle these three very specific monitors that are that you can't cover with your generation workflow? Yeah, it does. How, how do you handle those? Is that something that is merged into the configuration, or on the conf on the config that is like um, where is it? Yeah. If you see the config, um, imagine there is like a, a new monitor that is not. I mean, rec files uh, the the rec file that we have and the templates are limited. If there is a new th a new feature coming in that is not going to be implemented, but if we want to, to use it, we have these kind of files implemented that basically allow you to just take what you need which is exactly XML definition of your monitor put it in and it's going to be included on the during the rec file <coughs> on the file being produced so that's there's a place where you just put your one of a kind custom things uh, in your <coughs> in this workflow it that you don't have to converge something somewhere else with all done this, this workflow? Yes. We, we try to avoid any chain locally because when because any chain that is done locally on the OpenRMS system is, is lost. Mm -hmm. Because we are like a few people, if, it's, if a chain is not being tracked already or committed to SBN, it doesn't deserve to be on the on OpenRMS. So it's kicked away. So that's, you know, a mechanism of at least getting exactly co the control about what is going to go to open areas. Okay. Yeah. More question? Yes. Do, you, do you think it could be applied uh, to completely different systems than uh, OpenMS pretty easily? Um, definitely, yeah. I mean, the it depends on how standard is the configuration and how much complicated is to make it. I mean, yeah. yes. I mean uh, this thing is done in Ruby. Uh, I'm more a fan of, pi of Python, <laughs> but the uh, Python has a templating system and all that as well. So it's pretty straightforward to to take the basic files and produce yeah. all the XMS and everything that you need or any configuration that is required. Okay. So well, for Python, you could use macro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. All good. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Thank you.